It wasn't pretty, but it was gritty, and it was enough. Islanders win their fourth straight, a 3-1 win over the Blackhawks. We have our key takeaways, plus our weekly farm report on all things Bridgeport Islanders, and a whole lot more coming up on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Wednesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today and be part of the Locked On Islanders family. And Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, and that does include YouTube. If you've got something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, maybe a comment on something we've discussed, or a topic you'd like us to talk about on a future episode of the show, feel free to send us an email. The email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWords, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news notes and happenings. And I'm also live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me on Twitter for instant insight and analysis. And it's always great to interact and talk to Islander fans during the games and really any time. So feel free to contact me on Twitter uh, if you follow. And uh, it'd be great to to hear from you and what you'd like to, to hear on the show and Talk a little Islanders hockey with you at that. All right, Islanders, four straight wins for this hockey team. They beat the Chicago Blackhawks three to one. And it wasn't a pretty game by any stretch of the imagination. But you know what? Sometimes winning ugly is better than losing and playing well. So it's not that the Islanders played a bad game. There were some definite highlights to this one but look first of all let's get this out of the way congratulations to matt martin and his wife on the birth of their second daughter so maddie martz did not make the trip to chicago he was with his wife and his uh, newborn so we wish uh, the martins congratulations and wish them the best and maddie martz is scheduled at least to rejoin the team for thursday's game in st louis so ross johnston steps up he gets to play in matt martin's absence so even before the game starts the identity line is not all three of them out there and then what was it three and a half minutes roughly into this game uh not even two minutes 56 seconds into the game casey sezikis gets a five minute major for goalie interference it knocks chicago goaltender alex Stalock out of the game and it's a five-minute major for Zeke and a game misconduct. That was disappointing. Look, I don't think anybody believes that it was an intentional intent to injure by Casey Sezikis. That's not the kind of player he is. He's a physical player, but he's a clean player. And yet, you know, he did come in hard and did not make an effort to avoid Alex Stalock. Stalock left the game, did not return. Uh, so certainly we hope he's okay. But he was replaced by Arvid Soderblom, who finished up the game for the Blackhawks. And, you know, all of a sudden you're down a forward. And Lane Lambert has the challenge of sort of mixing and matching his lines with only three centers uh, on the roster. And yet the Islanders find a way to get it done and 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 again this game i think was sort of not artistic it was the kind of game was it was a slog for lack of a nicer way to put it and yet you know defensively the islanders held the blackhawks to 22 shots 
Sorokin bailed them out on those few occasions when they were playing sloppy. I love the fact that uh, J.G. Pajot stepped up his physicality, six hits in this game to lead all Islanders players, followed by Cal Clutterbuck. Defensively, the Islanders, for the most part, were very, very solid. And offensively, they did just enough. You had a a nice little tip-in goal, ugly goal by Anders Lee. But you know what? It's the kind of goal you need. It's a power play goal. Brock Nelson put the puck behind the goalie, and Lee just tapped it the rest of the way home. I mean, what was he? Six inches out of the goal. That's how far the puck went when it went off of Lee's stick and before it went over the line. But it was enough. And then in the third period, you get the goal by Brock Nelson, set up by a nice little play by Ross Johnston to get the puck to Nelson and, and, and start that move. Terrible penalty late in the game. Cal Clutterbuck off for interference. That was bad, and that's when the Blackhawks break the shutout. But then Adam Pellet taking a delay of game penalty with 4-12 left in the game. You know, that to me is one of those pen- – and again, it wasn't intentional. He was kind of off balance and kind of trying to make a play and maybe changed his mind midway through the decision, and the puck got away from him. Went over the net, over the glass, but you can't give a team with players like Taves and Kane and Max Domi a, 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 another power play opportunity late in the game down by a goal. Zach Parise with a very nice effort to get the empty netter and the Islanders win. So four wins in a row for this Islanders team. And, you know, some guys, like I said, really sort of picked up their game. Nelson and and uh, Lee played extremely well. Nice gutsy play by the 3P line of Pajot, Parise, and Palmieri. Uh, I, I like the way they played. And again, they didn't always stick together, but they did get the job done. And I'm kind of wondering about Adam Pellick a little bit. When I look at this game, and you know, he was a plus one and 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 that's all well and good, but just making some plays that are uncharacteristic of him in the defensive zone where you sort of expect him to be a little bit better. And, you know, he was fourth out of the six defensemen in this game uh, in minutes played, and there was a reason for it, really. Uh, but overall, you know what? It was It was an Islanders kind of win. There wasn't a lot of room on the ice for either team. There wasn't a lot of uh, exciting end-to-end rushes or, or pretty passes, but the Islanders did contain what is a, a, a good Chicago offensive attack, and they played well enough defensively, you know, to get the job done. And, and offensively, they did just enough. You, you have the sort of ingredients of your typical Islanders win here. Solid defensively, kind of close the door on the really good opportunities. When they do give up the good opportunities, your goaltender comes up big. And then just enough offense to get the job done. Even more gritty when you're already without Matt Martin and you lose Casey Sezekis not quite three minutes into the game. And you still manage to come out with the road win, your fourth straight win. You know, there's a lot that this team can build on from games like this. And I'll say this, and I'm not ready to say the New York Islanders are a great team just yet, but good hockey teams, winning hockey teams, playoff hockey teams, win games when they're not necessarily playing their A game, not at their best. And that's what the New York Islanders did on Tuesday in Chicago. You take the two points, you bank them, four straight wins, and you go from there. So good overall performance by the New York Islanders. They get the job done and pick up the two points. And guess what, folks? The Islanders are starting to climb in the standings. And if the season ended right now, the Islanders would be one of the two wild cards in the Eastern Conference. So uh, four straight wins, 
will do that for you. And it's definitely a positive for the New York Islanders. We have got more to discuss on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. We've got our weekly farm report. We'll talk all things Bridgeport Islanders. And I'll tell you right now, it's darn, it's exciting what's happening up in Bridgeport. So we'll talk about that. We'll have our Islanders birthday of the day, a first line player who had three straight 30 goal seasons for the Isles in the early 2010s. All that and more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Can we pause the pod for a second? Okay. Okay. We're paused. Great. Because you got to try this. I'm talking about Built Bar's new reimagined flavors. Cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, coconut brownie topper, white chocolate peppermint granola. It's Built's take on the granola bar. So it's more filling and still insanely tasty. And candy cane brownie puff. Built puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. First off, for anyone who hasn't tried Built Bars before, they are literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. They're revolutionizing nutrition as we know it. 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low sugar and calories. 130 calories per bar. Just sink your teeth into that first bite and it'll change your life forever. I'm not kidding. There will be a time before you tried these new Built flavors and the magical, wonderful time after. You're probably wondering which new flavor is my favorite. That's an unanswerable question to say the least. They're all unbelievable and they're all different. So you could order a mixed box and try all five new flavors for yourself. Built, you got to try this. Get 15% off your order right now by using the code LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. Thanks for making Locked On Islanders your first listen today. Now make your second listen Game to Game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the National Hockey League with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Time now for our weekly farm report as we talk all things Bridgeport Islanders. We do this every Wednesday. And I'll tell you right now, things are looking good for the Bridgeport Islanders right now. Let's start with some news before we get into the week that was. Uh, Ruslan uh, Ishkohov named the AHL's Rookie of the Month for October. And he had four goals and 11 points in seven games in October. The top scoring rookie in the entire league and he had a six game point streak including his first career AHL goal in a 3-2 win at Springfield on October 15th the Moscow native on fire right now and he has been a very strong addition to the Bridgeport Islanders lineup. So that certainly is encouraging. And, you know, you, you you sort of look at where he's at right now. He's tied for the team lead in points with 11. Andy Andreoff also has 11 points. Andreoff has five goals. Uh, Ishkov has uh, four goals. So technically, Andy Andreoff leading the team with 11 points. But, but, uh, but Ishkakov really looking strong right now. Samuel Bolduck, 10 points right behind them, including a team high, nine assists. And what a week it was. I have to give some credit here. Uh, you started off the week with essentially uh, a 7-6 overtime loss to the Thunderbirds, Springfield Thunderbirds. And that was a tough one. It's a road game, though, and you still pick up a point. So their unbeaten streak in regulation extended to five games. And, you know, Dennis Chalowski had three assists. Uh, basically, you had Andreoff and uh, Ishkakov adding a goal and an assist. Two helpers for Atu Ratu, which is always nice. And the Islanders had 40 shots on goal. Unfortunately, you know, the goaltending didn't quite hold up. You lose 7-6 in OT. 
but still pick up a point on the road. After that, though, the Islanders bounce back. They take on the Lehigh Valley Phantoms and end up with a 6-3 to three victory. And uh, Ish- Ishkakov, Andreoff, and Bolduck, each with three-point games for Bridgeport in that one. And uh, this one, a nice 6-3 to three win. Four of the goals on the power play, four goals in the second period, and now they are 5-0-1 in their last six games. So that is impressive. And Samuel Bolduck, by the way, three assists. Corey Schneider, 34 saves. He is 4-0-0 at this point in the season. And then the third game played since the last time we did a farm report last week, just happening early this morning, a Tuesday morning game uh, at home, and the Islanders go to a shootout, but end up beating the Charlotte Checkers by a score of four to three. And, you know, the beautiful thing now, you you have a seven-game unbeaten streak, 6-0-1 oh, in those seven games, and it's the 300th win for Brent Thompson as an AHL coach. So congratulations to him. Two of the goals on the power play, 32 saves for Corey Schneider. And who ends up with the uh, goal in his first professional shootout attempt that ends up uh, helping the Islanders win this one? William Dufour. So uh, overall, just a very strong performance by the Bridgeport Islanders. This team is starting to look very, very good. And, you know, I said at the beginning of the season that the nice mix of youth and experience that the Bridgeport Islanders have put together really going to make this team uh, improve this year. And so far, they are showing that to be a good prediction on my part for a change. Two games coming up at home. So if you want to have a little time this weekend, or maybe you're in the Bridgeport area, you can take the ferry up if you're from Long Island or drive up. But uh, two home games this weekend for the Bridgeport Islanders. Saturday, a 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time game against the Hartford Wolfpack. And then Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, the Providence Bruins come to uh, Bridgeport to take on the Bridgeport Islanders. So two good opponents and two home games this weekend for the red hot Bridgeport Islanders, a team that is just sort of finding its way uh, right now. And how about uh, Corey Schneider, 5-0 and on the year, a 9-13 save percentage and a 2-7-3 goals against average. Jakob Skarek, 1-1-1. One, one and one with a 404 goals against and an 879 save percentage. Heck, uh, Corey Schneider even has an assist already this year in five games. So Schneider really getting the job done for Bridgeport. And I- I'll tell you, you, you sort of look uh, at the standings right now. And technically, you know, they do it on a percentage. Bridgeport in second place, 6-1-1, one, and one, 13 points. The Wilkes Bar Scranton Penguins also 13 points, but they've played one fewer game. They're 6 0 and 1 uh, right now. But, uh, you know, tight battle up at the top, and the Providence Bruins just a point behind the Bridgeport Islanders. They're 5 1 and 2 at this point. So, uh, going to be a nice, tight race in the Atlantic Division of the AHL. But it's great to see all these young players and veteran players meshing well and basically helping the Bridgeport Islanders become a contending team in the American Hockey League this year. We have got more to get to on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. We've got our Islanders birthday of the day, plus uh, some more thoughts about last night's win over the Chicago Blackhawks. Let's see if you can guess Uh, who our Islanders' birthday of the day was. He was a a first-line forward with three straight 30-goal seasons and an alumni of Cornell University. We've got all that and more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast.
Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And yesterday, November 1st, was the 39th birthday of former Islanders winger, the one and only Matt Molson. Molson originally drafted in the ninth round by the Pittsburgh Penguins back in 2003. As I mentioned, he spent four years at Cornell University, had uh, four solid seasons, including a 22-goal campaign in 34 games in 2004-2005, made his NHL debut with the LA Kings in 2007-2008, but didn't become a full-time NHLer until he joined the Islanders in 2009-2010, and boy, did he burst onto the scene. 30 goals and 48 points that year, playing on a line with John Tavares. Fit, followed that up with a 31-goal season the following year, and a 36-goal, 69-point season in 2011-2012. Stayed with the Islanders until early in the 2013-2014 season when he was traded to Buffalo, uh, and played for Minnesota, then Buffalo, and last played in the NHL in 2017-2018 with the Sabres. For a ninth-round draft choice, Matt uh, Molson went on to have a pretty solid NHL career, 650 games, 176 goals, 369 points, and only 122 penalty minutes. You can uh, add 16 playoff games, three goals, six points, 14 penalty minutes, and <coughs> six of those 16 games were with the Islanders, two of the three goals, and one assist, uh, all during his time with the Isles in 2012. 2013. We're going to go back and look at one of Matt Molson's better games as an Islander. Islanders visiting the American Airlines Center in Dallas on December 3rd, 2011. Uh, Rick DiPietro in goal for the Islanders. Andrew Raycroft is in net for the Dallas Stars. And the Islanders get on the board first. And it was you know, nice bit of play here for the Islanders uh, on the power play. And basically, Matt Molson gets his 10th. John Tavares, Mark Streit with the assist at 8.55, one nothing Islanders. Molson scores again, our Islanders' birthday of the day. Uh, a minute 59 later, his 11th, Tavares and P.A. Parento with the helpers. And after the first period, it's 2 nothing Isles. In the second, Dylan Reese extends the Islanders' lead to three to nothing. His first, Matt Martin and Marty Reasoner with the helpers at 248. But Dallas storms back. Thomas uh, Vincor, his first from Stefan Robida and Mike Ribeiro at 327 makes it three to one. Eric Nystrom, Bob Nystrom's son, his 10th from Vernon Fiddler and Nicholas Grossman at 453 makes it 3 to 2. And then Jake Dowell, his first from Tom Wandell and Toby Peterson, ties it at 3. Three goals in two minutes and three seconds by Dallas. And all of a sudden, we are all even. But Matt Molson, our Islanders' birthday of the day, completes the hat trick just 27 seconds after the Stars tie it. Tavares and Parenteau again on the assists at 5.57. Isles up by a goal. Tom Wandell ties it late in the second period. His first from Jake Dowell and Radek Dvorak at 16.08. And all of a sudden, it's 4-4. Four to four. But Matt Molson gets his fourth goal of the game, 13th of the year, from P.A. Parenteau a minute and two seconds after the Wandell goal. It was 5-4 Islanders after 40 minutes, and that's the way it ended. Rick DiPietro gets the win, making 17 saves, facing 21 shots. Al Montoya played the third period and preserved the one-goal lead. But for Matt Molson, our Islanders' birthday of the day, four goals. He was a plus two, one goal coming on the power play. He had seven shots on goal, which did lead all Islanders players. And yes, he had the game winner. So a career high four goal game for Matt Molson. Uh, the unheralded 30 goal scorer three times for the New York Islanders. We're a day late, but again, happy 39th to Matt Molson. He is our Islanders birthday of the day.
Some final thoughts about the win over the Blackhawks. You sort of think, well, first of all, let's say this. The Blackhawks are playing better than most people expected them to play this year. Uh, if you, When the schedule came out, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, Chicago, fairly easy game. They're not going to be a very good team. They're probably going to be uh, in the, the lottery for the number one pick. They're doing pretty darn well. And if you saw our crossover episode from Tuesday show, you, we sort of broke that down for you a little bit. But the Islanders, you know, this could have been sort of a trap game. You're going out on the road. You're against a team that isn't expected to do all that much. You just came up with three big wins. To me, one of the more important aspects of this win is that Lane Lambert got this team to play well enough to get the W when they easily could have played a stinker of a game and sort of let down. Now, they they weren't playing their A game, don't get me wrong, but the fact that they played smart enough defensively and got just enough done offensively to win the game uh, says a lot about the character of this team. And when you're coming off that emotional comeback win over the Avalanche, the defending Stanley Cup champions, just getting a, a, a relatively ugly but efficient three to one win on the road to start a road trip. You bank those two points and you keep going and bring on the blues on Thursday. So, you know, good times Islander fans right now. Want to thank you again for making locked on Islanders. Your first listen for your next listen, check out the locked on sports today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. That does it for this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. We'll be back tomorrow, as we are every Monday through Friday. We'll preview the game in St. Louis. We'll have the latest update on uh, any possible fines or hopefully no suspensions on Casey Sezikis and all the latest Islanders news notes and happenings. So join us for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, Let's go Islanders.